Hi guys, welcome back. So in today's video, I want to talk about setting up, balancing and maintaining a dated planted tank, a low-tech dated planted tank like the wall stab method. There's tons of videos, we've all seen them online, saying no CO2, no fertilizers, no water changes, self-sustaining ecosystem aquarium. There's thousands of these videos everywhere, but then we don't get any follow-up. Or at best we see the tank 12, six months later, being torn down because the soil run out of nutrients. And the truth is, soil is more like a fridge and we have to restock our fridge. Otherwise, the plants run out of nutrients and they die. In this video, I'm going to give you four simple steps to balance and maintain a Wallstad style, low-tech planted tank. So number one is lighting. The trick with lighting in a low-tech planted tank is we don't want it too low, so we're looking for if your plants stop growing and if they're starting to get or they're getting leggy and starting to like reach with stem plants, they'll start dropping all the bottom leaves. These are signs that our lights are too low. Now, if the lights are too high, your CO2 in the water column will drop too fast, and then the algae can use the nutrients in the water and the light, but the plants can't because they haven't got any CO2, so we're locking the lights out, they can't compete with the algae. So we're starting to see signs of algae in our tank. Chances are the lights are too high, so we need to adjust them down a little bit. Now, with my lights, I like to run them for four hours on and then let them go off for four hours so the CO2 level can build back up in the water, and then I'll let them come back on for four hours and then they go off for 12, and the CO2 constantly replenishes itself. It's, it's called a siesta, it's in the book. I find I get better results from it. There's less chance of algae, but with like the likes of this, I've got it set up over multiple tanks, this light, so I'm running a sponge filter, and what I'm doing is constantly maintaining CO2 and gas exchange at the surface. So then I can run my lights for longer, and the CO2 levels won't get as high, but they should be steady. But if I didn't have this one light on multiple tanks, I'd set it up so it's on for four hours, off for four hours, on for four hours and off for 12. Number two. Everyone thinks once you put dirt in a tank, then testing goes out the window. We don't have to do it. But we need to test in all planted tanks. A dirted tank is just a planted tank. It's a low-tech planted tank. We need to test for ammonia. We need to test, ideally, for nitrite. We need to test for nitrate, possibly phosphate, potassium. And we need to test for or GH and KH, and ideally we'd like to test for calcium and magnesium because all these different things are different sources of plant food. So the minimum we could possibly get away with testing is our nitrates, our GH, our KH and our pH. Now the soil should naturally buffer our pH to about 7. And ideally we want to be aiming for levels of nitrates at about 10 parts per million, maybe 20, and then our phosphates, we want them to be below 1, and then our, our GH and our KH, ideally we should be about 7, and we can test these and then we can dose. So step 3 is our water changes. When we set up a new tank, all the nutrients in the soil are going to explode out into the water column, and every week for the first 6 weeks we want to be doing like a 50% water change, topping it up with fresh water, so we're releasing as much of that build up of nutrients as we can there's still going to be plenty in there for the plants to use but we don't want that massive build up of nutrients in the water column we want to balance it out and it'll speed the process of cycling the tank up and then once we've done six weeks worth of like weekly water changes then we can start to taper off and just keep an eye on our nitrate levels as long as nothing's spiking our tank should be fine and some they can run for up to like three months um because if we're not changing our water for nitrates, then we're changing it for a buildup of our organics in the water. And we can change this for like every three months. We can do like a 50% water change every three months and everything should be fine. Number four is dosing. The minimum we can get away with on this is maybe we dose GH, KH, so we're dosing calcium, magnesium, and bicarbonate of soda or... So the minimum we can get away with is calcium, magnesium, 
bicarbonate of soda or a KH buffer. I like to use, I like to use a bicarbonate of soda when I'm cycling the tank because the tank will already be producing tons of potassium from the soil. So the salt in bicarbonate of soda will balance this out in the system. And then once the tank's been cycled for six weeks, then I'll swap over to potassium bicarbonate. So we're adding the bicarb to raise the KH and we're also adding potassium to feed the plants. Finally, while everyone sees it as a flex, not fertilizing a low-tech plant, there is some fantastic low-tech fertilizers out there like Flourish, um, which is great for low-tech tanks like this, which doses trace amounts of nitrate and phosphates, which it doesn't compete with all and then there's this which is virtually the same thing it doses micronutrients this one doses ammonium and phosphates in trace amounts so it's great for low-tech plants it's lean in the water and the soil can uptake it so it won't really compete with algae in the water column because the soil will take it up and deliver it to the roots but they'll also it'll also uptake fast and here's a nice uh, transition tank ready for wall start so there you go guys, there's four simple steps to setting up and maintaining a dated Wallstad style low tech planted tank. In the next video, what I want to talk about is sand, fine sand, what's going to happen in a dated tank if you use sand. And if you enjoyed this video and you want to see how I set this tank up, please watch this video and I'll show you the steps of how I set this tank up. Thanks. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you're interested in seeing more content like this, please consider subscribing. And if you've got any questions or any comments, please feel free to throw them in the comment section. I'll check them all out. Take care, guys. See you soon.